Here comes the metal. All right, so this is our third time ordering some metal roofing from Thunder Mountain Metal Sales. And we've been really happy with the first two, so we thought we'd try it again. Uh, we went with a, a barn red this time, as you can see. The, the first two roofs we had were green, but they were out of the green this time, and Pam actually liked the red, so we went with that. Um, here we've got 13 panels at 32 feet long each, and all the associated trim and screws. Hi, I'm Brian. <laughs> 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 Brian's down there. <laughs> you look so tiny. So we're fixing to start putting this roof on. The metal roof, hopefully. This may be the last time you see it like this because it should be red next time I film it. <laughs> this, this is the first panel going on. This is one of 13. <laughs> that this sticks up a ways. Yeah, it's a big difference. I can make it up go higher if you want. Oh, it's good. It's good. Oh, he's oh, he's doing a lot better. We got one panel up. It's time for lunch. <laughs> lunch time, break time. Yeah, break time. <laughs> so I'm going, same thing. I'm going this way. These things freak me out, especially being as long as they are. I am so paranoid. Whoa! <laughs> Every little bend that freaks me out because I know they're they're sort of flimsy. Piece of cake. Yeah. Oh. All right. Take a look at the ladder. Couple feet my way. Right there. That's your close. You can walk on the panel. All right. So, uh, why are y'all stacking them like that? Because. <laughs> well, you can't just lay them out. I mean, because I'm not, I'm not screwing them down. Oh, yet. I get it. So, we have to kind of put them in place and then trap them. Derp. Okay. It's going to take me a couple days. <laughs> that might have been a, a, a goofy question. It's all right. Oh, my gosh. I'm just informing <laughs> the listeners. <laughs> That's true. So, it'll be the stick man without a face. <laughs> we'll do it after we lay it down, probably. Yeah. On the Is that number four oh, or yes. three? Number three? That's a uh, four? Four. I think that's four. We're getting ahead of ourselves. Seinfeld, four? <laughs> slow down. <laughs> I'm 
This is the last one. They're not installed yet. They're just piling them up. Piling them up up there. And then Brian will go back and put them on. But the hardest part is getting them up there, right? Yeah, but it's not bad. It's not, it's not too bad. When you have a helper. Yeah. <laughs> so what, how's this work? I didn't get a, I didn't ask you how so it So you works. just clamp onto it with a special set of vice grips that have kind of a flat edge. Yeah? Oh, and yeah? you just use a rope to pull. Oh, genius. It's working really well. So they got two ladders set up with these. I think Bill and Yvonne did something similar. Some sort of a rope. And I assumed I would be doing something. Nylon like rope, it looks like. Right. Hey, Brian, is that a special nylon rope? What's special? No, there's nothing special about them. Okay. They're actually two different ropes, but. Not there yet. Oh, they win. <laughs> He's thinking. Yay! So lucky for me, after we raised up all the panels onto the roof and had a quick sandwich break, uh, William suggested that we try attaching a couple of the panels. <laughs> because I know you're having I hope you have your diapers on right now <laughs> <laughs> hey that's looking good now I saw you're messing the shed babe 
<laughs> I had an accident. I had a little old accident. <laughs> Wait, you're making him do all the work? What are you doing? Oh, oh no. <laughs> oh, Lord. Why aren't you helping him? So once we started to lay the panels out and uh, put about half the required screws into them just to keep them from blowing away while we were working on them, uh, they went down pretty quick. We made our way across the roof pretty quickly. Uh, what we're doing here is putting a strip of butyl tape at the overlap between panels. Each of the panels is about three feet wide. So when you transition from one panel to the next, you put a strip of butyl tape to help seal that transition up. So it's a little bit of a tedious process because that tape doesn't really want to cooperate and it's kind of gummy and it tears apart and doesn't really work the way you want it to. But eventually we got it in there and it should make a good seal between the, the two panels. <laughs> Brian, I'm getting your good side again. <laughs> Now here we are screwing the panels in uh, just every few feet along the length and at every rib. Like I said, for today, while William was there, we just did about maybe half the screws just so that uh, we could move across pretty quickly. So I'll just go back in the next few days and add the rest of the screws in. Day one, still a little work to do. We only did about half of the screws, I suppose. So we went back and put a lot of the screws in and we had to finish up that last panel. It has to be cut and attached. So that's why the tires are there. But, uh, and of course all the trim work, but heck of a day for day one. We got them all up here and attached. All right guys, so here we are at the last panel. So as you can see there, I think that I've got to cut about half of this panel. I've got to cut this panel about in half. Um, so um, the best way to do this probably would be with a set of electric, what they call nibblers. It's basically just a metal cutter that's electric and it, and it does a real nice clean job. I think of cutting right up there. I don't have one of those. So um, I think I am going to use a metal cutting blade on a circular saw. Um, I've read about it a little bit online and it seems they, I've tried a practice cut on a piece of corrugated metal, not an actual piece of this metal, but on a piece of corrugated metal. It made a nice clean cut. Um, I'm going to probably make a, a practice cut on the, on the waste side of this metal just to make sure that it cuts well there too, but I believe it will based on my practice cut on the corrugated metal. Um, so I think it'll make a clean cut. The one thing I've read about online is that you might not notice until later that because of the heat that they generate when they cut, you know, a circular saw, um, it can leave the metal open to corrosion in the future. So it seems like that's the big drawback of cutting metal with a circular saw, is that you can have corrosion in the future. Now, it turns out for my application here, I'm cutting this strip down here, and that's going to be the end of the roofing, and that end is going to be covered with a big piece of uh, trim. So I don't think that that piece is ever really going to see any weather. But just to be safe, I might spray it with kind of a clear, um, a clear coat type uh, a Krylon or a Rust-Oleum or something. Just spray that edge maybe to give it a little bit extra protection. But I actually don't think it's a worry for me. Now, I'd be, it might be different if I were cutting this edge or something right at the top or the bottom. And it was going to be exposed forever. That could get a little ugly, I think, in the future. But I think for my application, I think I'm going to be okay with just cutting it with the circular saw. So that's what I'm going to try. Um, like I said, I'll try a practice cut first and then hopefully we can just run down the length of this thing. So let's give that a go. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, please hit that thumbs up button and consider subscribing or sharing with a friend. And click the bell notification so you never miss any of our videos. We really appreciate every view and comment. And if you're looking for other ways to support us, please check out the links in the description box. See you, See you in the, the next, next video. video. <laughs>